Anton Schwarzkopf is one of the most revolutionary figures in roller coaster history. His company got into the coaster game early on and is credited with pulling off the first successful modern day vertical loop back in 1976. Schwarzkopf coasters dominated the 1970s and can still be found strewn around the United States. Despite all of these coasters being older than me, and I'm pretty old, I have ridden almost all of the active Schwarzkopfs in the country, so here are my top 10. I've actually ridden 11 Schwarzkopfs, so the one that misses this top 10 is the defunct Wildcat at Cedar Point. This was a very popular model and not very unique. And it's a decent family coaster, but it does not stack up against the thrill rides that are in my top 10. So at number 10, I'm going with Scorpion at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is definitely one of the weaker coasters at the park, which is not the case with many of the other coasters on this list. So it just gets overshadowed by the amazing lineup that Busch Gardens Tampa has. It was built in 1980 as the park's second coaster and is the oldest operating coaster at the park. It's pretty simple, 60 feet tall, 41 miles an hour, one loop, and less than 2,000 feet of track. Solid coaster, but nothing too special. At number 9 is Silver Bullet at Frontier City. Unlike Scorpion, which gets overshadowed by its neighbors, this Schwarzkopf is the star of this little Six Flags park. It was relocated from Maryland's Jolly Roger Amusement Park in 1986 and has a similar layout as Scorpion. It's just a little taller and faster, featuring the single inversion. Even though this is a solid ride, I hope that Six Flags can do something for this park that will make this seem less impressive. Coming in at number 8 is Colossus the Fire Dragon at Lagoon. This is the first double looping Schwarzkopf on this list, and many people consider this a top 2 or 3 coaster at Lagoon, despite being the third oldest coaster in this solid lineup, opening back in 1983 after being relocated from a traveling fair in Germany. I thought this coaster was pretty overhyped. It didn't do a whole lot for me, and I would rank it in the middle of the pack in the park. There's not really much to the ride after those iconic back-to-back -back loops. Number 7 is a coaster that barely survived the chopping block, Whizzer at Six Flags Great America. This custom speed racer model opened with the park in 1976 and features bobsled seating, a spiral lift, long shallow drops of the trees, and several low to the ground turns. It's a family coaster and I think it's really interesting. One thing that some of you may not care about is that this has a height limit of 36 inches. So if you have kids, this is an amazing coaster to get them into coasters. I'm glad that the fans of this park forced them to save this classic and scrap Shockwave when they were looking for a spot for Superman. Number 6 is the first looper in the eastern US, Super Duper Looper at Hershey Park. It debuted in 1977 and it throws riders straight into the loop after the first drop, and then it meanders around using the terrain, a tunnel, and ends up with a pretty good helix. This is a good coaster to get kids to experience their first inversion, but overall it was pretty tame. And number 5 is the granddaddy of all the loopers. Revolution at Six Flags Magic Mountain. One of the most impressive things about this is not only was it the first modern coaster to feature a vertical loop when it debuted in 1976, but the ride's layout is great. It features a few sweeping drops that work well along the side of the mountain before hitting a brake run that leads to the gradual drop that throws you into that beautiful circular loop before winding around the mountainside. It's a long ride with a great layout. It only ranks lower on this list because it rides like a family coaster, and coasters above it on this list are more forceful. Number 4 is Jetstar 2 at Lagoon. This coaster is the second oldest coaster in the park, relocated from Spokane's Riverfront Park in 1976, and it's insane. First, you can't ride this if you're a single rider, and in that way you're forced to either sit in someone's lap or have someone sit in your lap, which could be super uncomfortable. This also has a spiral lift and it drops you straight into a sharp left hand turn which makes you feel like you're going to go face first into the track when you're in the front row. There's also a helix type element that throws you into bank turns right against the ground which is a weird feeling in those bobsled style trains. This ride isn't very long but it's super intense and it's a really weird experience. My number three Schwarzkopf is Mindbender at Six Flags over Georgia. People rave about this being the best Schwarzkopf but I was disappointed. This is a long ride that features some big drops and two non-consecutive loops, and it also uses the terrain very well, but I did not find it to be anywhere near as forceful or packed with airtime like another coaster that's similar but ranked higher on this list. This opened in 1978, and for its age, is still a pretty good coaster. At number two is a sentimental favorite of mine, Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. 
This opened in 1978, and it's the only Schwarzkopf shuttle loop still operating in the United States. This was my first looping coaster over 20 years ago, and I love to marathon this on a day where knots is empty. The flywheel launch is surprisingly forceful, like the vertical loop taken forward and backwards, and I love a back row ride to get maximum height on that back spike. And finally, the number one Schwarzkopf I've ridden is Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas. This has back-to-back -back loops which pull a crazy amount of positive Gs, and it will make you gray out. But the ride is just getting started. If you're in the back row, the ride then starts tossing you out of your seat in the second half, and even though it meanders around a little, the combination of extreme positive and negative forces makes this my favorite Schwarzkopf and a strong contender for the second best coaster in the park. It opened in 1978, and the only coasters older than it over Texas are the two mine trains. So this coaster definitely stands the test of time. Keep in mind, these are my personal favorites. I did not get to ride Zonga, Olympia Looping, or a Chimera, which would all be high on this list. So let me know what you think of this list and your list of favorite Schwarzkopf's. Also be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, and I will see you guys all next time.